So a lot of you may be wondering, what will the next YouTube war be like? Or maybe I'm the only one who does, but nevertheless you clicked on this video so today I'm going to be delving into the future overlord of this website and why exactly it's so powerful. This is the Coco Melon Channel Explained. My name is Dallas, also known as Inferness, and I'll be your host on today's episode. And that shouldn't come as too much of a surprise because, well, I'm the only one who actually runs this channel. So yeah. But a lot of you wanted me to go into further detail on the mystery behind the Coco Melon YouTube channel from the previous video I did only a few days ago. And really investigate the details behind what exactly is going on here. Now I don't know about you, but the instant that I saw this video from PewDiePie pop up into my homepage and recommended section, the first thing that popped into my mind was simply, Here we go again. But what exactly is the difference this time around rather than the last? What is the origins of this strange looking watermelon? Ellen. Why will it soon be the biggest channel in history? The first thing that we should understand here is that the Coco Melon YouTube channel isn't just a YouTube channel. It goes a bit further than that. As a matter of fact, it's a multi-network company, Netflix show, TV channel, and an online kids education center, all owned by one huge company with over 20 employees. This is not just a single lone person behind the genius of videos such as this. So yeah. Once again, the companies reign superior over the independent peoples once more. But now, we have an actual explanation as to why. And the reason is far different than to why Indian channels such as T-Series started dominating all throughout the last couple of years. All of that could be credited to India and its somewhat crowded little country finally introducing a new internet plan which gave billions of more people access to the web along with the largest and most highly preferred websites such as this one. It's simple math. Give a billion people a computer and Wi-Fi, and the next thing you know, T-Series has over a hundred billion views. Like, what the frick? How do you even get that many views? That just doesn't even seem possible to me. But regardless of that, as I covered in my previous video, we discussed that the new rise of Coco Melon and the similar alike channels was due to a far more fundamental aspect of YouTube itself. The COPPA rule one day made itself known to all of YouTube and essentially threatened to cough and dance all videos that could be framed for kids all the way to non-existence. But this wasn't the end of it. The moment this all happened, the people running YouTube all of a sudden said, Oh no, this isn't cash money. So they decided to go and use a subsidiary platform that already existed called YouTube Kids, and slowly start to move all the content marked as for children by a signature tag underneath the video player to the specific branch of YouTube, where it would only be accessible to kids alone. After this, they advertised the actual shit out of this platform basically everywhere, on websites, TV channels, sponsorships, and even normal YouTube video advertisements, because the loophole is, you can't put ads directly on any kids related video, but nothing technically prevents you from promoting a whole platform full of them. So what this effectively caused was for channels of the likes of which of Coco Melon and all the rest of the plethora of kids channels to be subsequently promoted like crazy to the billions of kids across the web. Mostly their parents, might I add. Giving them multiple times the amount of natural exposure and traffic as to what they were receiving on the surface YouTube website, and yet only a mere fraction of the competition from the other millions of channels that are also on the surface, and not present or available to watch on YouTube Kids. So over the months that all of this took place, these channels, and the leading one in particular, exponentially rose in power due to the extreme shift in dominance. And if you think this is just not a big deal, well, you have a dark future awaiting you because it's only predicted to continue further and more extreme as the whole new generation Alpha, which is apparently a thing, starts to shift onto YouTube. So it's somewhat similar to the era of internet in India causing Indian channels to explode, but this time, we're not just limited to a single country but a whole world of kids from all countries alike. That's kind of scary in my opinion. Just to put in perspective how fast this all happened, this channel in particular went almost 10 years before finally reaching 1 million subscribers in 2016, taking them only another 2 years to reach 10 million subscribers, and then 2 years after that, almost 90 million subscribers. And with numbers currently, that even puts T-Series to shame. And that only goes to show that we are now being introduced to a whole new era of YouTube as a whole, and we can only predict that in 5 years from now, the very most subscribed channels will not be individuals. Nope, not even Indian music label channels. But channels that make videos called Yes, yes, vegetable song, a cocoa nursery rhymes and kids songs with 2.2 billion views. 
Oh my. This is not an Avengers level threat. This is not a joke, okay? But this is an extinction event. The final question, will this cause another worldwide war between this channel and PewDiePie? Or maybe even this channel versus T-Series? To put it simply, I would put my guess at probably not. After the subscriber counts were abbreviated and effectively removed as a whole, the entire incentive behind even paying attention to the number of subscribers for YouTube channels was pretty much extinguished. However, I do believe it will be a moment of reckoning regardless. So that is the Coco Melon YouTube channel explained. You shouldn't be surprised that within a couple of years from now, this will become the largest YouTube channel, and it will only be the beginning of the new reign of children's channels basically being the face of YouTube. That's basically where all of this went to. So that's all there really is to talk about in this video, and uh, yeah. I'm not sure if this is necessarily an inherent bad thing or a good thing, but all I know is that it's guaranteed to happen right now, starting now and further into the future. So that's the future of this website, and hopefully we can learn to adapt to it and maybe even take it to our advantage. So I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Goodbye.